criticism has continued to trade the comments of Bola Ahmed Tinubu, the ruling All Progressive Congress presidential candidate in the forthcoming general election in Nigeria. Last week, the former Lagos State Governor, while campaigning at a rally in Abeokuta, the Ogun State Capital, said that the powers that be wanted to scuttle his chances in the election slated for the 25th of February. Also speaking at another rally held at the UGS Swine Stadium in Calabar, Cross River State Capital on Tuesday, Chinubu said that Buhari's government made the Naira dollar exchange rate at 200 Naira to the dollar, but it has depreciated to about 800 Naira to the dollar at the parallel market. However, the APC Presidential Campaign Council has stated that Bola Tinubu did not attack President Muhammad Ubari when he spoke about the country's exchange rate. Also, in a statement issued yesterday by Ononoga, the campaign's media director, said the People's Democratic Party, PDP, created a current exchange rate crisis experienced by the country. Joining us now on this show to discuss the campaign activities of the ruling All Progressives Congress, the APC, ahead of the 2023 general election in Nigeria, is Biodun Ajiboye, Assistant Director, Media and Publicity, Tinubu Shetima Campaign Council. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much. Well, two quick, two quick things. Your party <laughs> seems to be throwing stones, <laughs> you know, within the same house. You have the governor of Cardinal State, Nasir Rufai, uh, who declared yesterday that indeed, or was it on Tuesday, that indeed there are 50 columnists in your party who do not want the party to win. And he also commented on certain policies of the government as uh, something being backed by persons who lost out at the party primary, uh, you know, to scuttle the party's presidential ambition. Now, what's your take on this? Because we've seen other people saying that what uh, uh, Governor Nasir Rufai said is self-explanatory. He has also received the tacit support of uh, the uh, First Lady of Nigeria. Who, who tweeted the video, and uh, we've discussed this uh, earlier this morning, to say that it looks like your party is imploding from within and suffering from a crisis of internal democracy. Thank you very much, Dr. Ruben. Uh, first of all, I, I hope we'll be able to uh, discuss freely because of this um, transmission. I. I hear you, I get, it, get, it gets delayed, you know, but I can manage. Now, let, let's address these issues carefully. Um, there is no party or no human organization without its own, you know, attendant issues. No human organization. So that anything is um, uh, observed as being fairly you know, or, 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 or uncomfortable with APC is not to mean that uh, the party is imploding. Now, um, you know very well that uh, the opposition party will naturally latch on to any little issues and they will blow it out of proportion. I, I, I don't know if you are hearing me because... Uh, clearly, I need to, clearly you know, we can hear you. We can sure hear you. Are... We can hear you, clearly. Please go ahead. Uh, to that extent... I will not, you know, uh, agree with some of these exaggerations that people tout, you know, and people go around to, to say. But I will simply, you know, uh, try to situate the matter the best, you know, way I know. Um, I, I was very, very uh, involved. I was actively involved in the scenarios that... Uh, you know, uh, uh, before the primaries. So I know exactly what happened. I was actually on this same station 24 hours before primary when everything became so hot with respect to um, 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 uh, uh, which candidate to be adopted, which one not to be adopted, and the statement of the chairman has been, you know, uh, instigated from the villa and all of that kind of thing. Well, uh, there are always a lot of odd rules to cross in this kind of situation. And uh, if uh, what Governor El Rufai yesterday said will be an issue to address, it is just part of the odd rules we need to cross. However, 
Um, I do know emphatically, and I keep to say, that uh, um, somebody in the, in, in the position of uh, uh, Godwin Emefile um, cannot be trusted with the responsibility of uh, uh, Nara redesign, uh, particularly at a time like this. I wonder if he had won the primaries, if he would have been happy if uh, a, 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 an exercise, a, a policy like that is being you know, uh, uh, executed at a point like this election period. And whatever it is, um, I, I, I do not particularly want to start to blame the president. I don't see any good reason to blame Mr. President for what is going on. I think I blame the governor of Central Bank who should put his acts to, who should have been able to put his acts together seamlessly in a way that would not have these traces of failure that is now generating so much uh, uh, heat in the polity. For me, that is where the problem actually lies. Secondly, I do not ever see any reason why Godwin Emefile will, uh, will do things right at this point in time. I can't see. Godwin Emefile is a PDP appointee to start with. And uh, to that extent, uh, he still has his, uh, he still has his uh, cohorts within the system, within the PDP. For me, I, I think that is where the problem actually is. And uh, again, for if I were Mr. President, and quite frankly, for him to have contested or attempted to contest for the position of uh, presidency at the, at the primaries would have been enough to tell him to go. Because there is no way he would have been happy that anybody else won. You know, and as I said it a few days ago on this same station, and a couple of our compatriots have said the same thing. Uh, that is where I think the problem is. There's yeah, Godwin Emefile is actually, to my understanding, the problem. Because governor of Central Bank, you know, you need to put your acts together. You need to have known, he needed to have known that not everybody has a bank in Nigeria. Not every local government even has a bank. To you, for you to now hang the activities of the Naira redesign ex and uh, uh, the execution of Naira redesign on, on, on availability of bank in neighborhoods and uh, local government, it's, 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 it's naturally going to end a colossal failure. So if he had known that, he would have been able to adjust his activities and the program of the redesign of the Naira to suit the circumstance of the people. I just got to know yesterday, for instance, there are, there are two local governments in Kaduna State without a bank at all. And there are quite a lot of local governments in uh, other states like uh, Borono without banks at all. So how do you then hang a, an exercise so sensitive to the people holding money you know, to availability of bank, when you know that there are even some people culturally, they don't even, they don't even patronize the banks. Oh. Wouldn't, you have, wouldn't you have found a way to situate your policy and the execution of the policy to suit the people, to suit the people and their character and their, uh, you, know, you know, availability of uh, the, the, the kind of uh, instruments you think you need to use to execute the program? That's where I have a problem in actual fact. Well, Okay. I think I leave it there. All until right. I, Thank you, I Mr. Ajiboye. I have a few questions to ask you. I wish I could you. be seeing them. Okay. I have a few questions to ask you. I, I'm sure you can hear us, and um, I'm sure Nigerians can see you and hear you. I can hear, but I'd like to see you. Nigerians well, there can is a see monitor you. in the studio there. If you want to see us, they will put it on for you. Okay. <laughs> Okay. All right. Yes. So for a better quality for your sake, we've enabled just audio so you can hear us faster. However, let me just ask you a few questions with regards to what you said about the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria. The first thing I want to ask you, is, I want to ask you is this: Who we appointed the federal and um, the governor of the CBN in 2019? Um, are you also aware that the governor has mentioned that he? Let me. I'll finish and then you can respond. That the governor of the CBN also mentioned that the president is in support of these policies. In fact, on two occasions, he's gone to see the president, um, um, President Muhammad Buhari, in his home in Daora, Katsina State. And so the president is very much aware of what's going on. Besides, Governor L. Rafai said in his interview that this is not the first time the president is doing this. When he was military head of state, he also had pushed for a redesign of the Naira to mop up illicit funds. So this is in character with the person of the president. 
And then beyond that, if you're saying that you're, um, you're, take, you're um, absolving the president of being you know, against your presidential candidate, your presidential candidate himself said in Abel Kuta and also in Uyo that, first in Abel Kuta, he said that uh, the people who are redesigning the Naira, the fuel scarcity, they're sabotaging. And then he later on said that uh, they brought the dollar from $200 uh, when he came into office. Now it's $800 to a Naira. So he's actually speaking to the president. So it's a bit difficult when you say that it's not the president you're referring to, the president is not against, it's just some elements within his, you know, within Aso Rock. I'd like you to please um, respond. Yes, very brilliant of you, madam. I must tell you very clearly uh, that in an administrative system, in an administrative setup, where you have the chief executive who supports, or a board, let's even say a board, the Beth, they come up with policy ideas and say, this is necessary for us to do. And they, it cas it's cascaded. It's cascaded to the managing director who is supposed to execute the policy. And it's further cascaded to perhaps the executive director whose professional purview this particular policy falls. Therefore, that President Buhari supports the policy of Naira redesign or interested in the policy of Naira redesign is not supposed to mean, or is not the same as the governor of Central Bank, whose professional know-how is to map, map, map the strategies to achieve this policy objective. Policy drifts actually comes up in the area of execution of policy. So I support, I agree with you, like I agreed with somebody on this program a couple of days back, that yes, President Buhari supported or supports the policy of the design of the Naira. And he stops there. If the execution of that policy is badly managed, then you now talk to the professional in charge. And this is where the crux of the argument actually is at this point in time. Our presidential candidates in the Ebola Ahmed Tinumbu did not and will not in good conscience refer to President Buhari. Because, of course, he understands that somebody somewhere must be able to hold on to this policy, manage this policy, own this policy, and take credit for its, for its fine execution. To that extent, he knew exactly what he was referring to. Secondly, secondly, we have been hearing so many times that there is a, a group of people within the system not necessarily Mr. President, but within the system, you know, that actually have, or that actually, you know, harbors a different agenda at different times. Like I said, we experience same during the primaries, and information is rife with respect to some people within the villa trying to support some candidates to become, you know, some uh, at the primaries support some people to, and up till tomorrow, some of them are still smarting from the, from the failure. What we just did, I remember I was on this same program, I was not on this program, but in this same studio, saying that we need a free and fair primaries to take place. And if we had a free and fair primaries, we really do not have anything to fair. And truly, we had a successful free and fair primaries, and it was just good. So some people who felt they could go through the back door to take the, 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 the ticket of the party may still be feeling uncomfortable. And, you know, uh, we all know, just like, the, like you say, the wife of the president supported uh, uh, the claim by, you know, uh, Governor El Rufai. You know, she has been talking for a while she, at a different occasions because, of course, uh, I mean, perhaps she, she sees the manipulation going around within the system. And we cannot, at this p critical point, you know, look elsewhere, but to kind of address the issues the way they should be addressed for us to have a, a, a solution. That's my take on that. I do not, and I know, and I believe, and I understand perfectly well that uh, uh, our presidential candidate was not for any reason, for any reason, referring to President Buhari. Of course, President Buhari, by his disposition, by his behavior, by his speech, by statement, would wish once, not even would wish, once 
a free and fair election, even his own elections, he, he told everybody, he told the whole world that what he would actually wish is a free and fair election, which is, that's just his mindset. That's just who he is. He's a very straightforward person. But around him, you can't vouch for everybody else around him who probably are trying to manipulate the system. And it will be unfair. It will be unfair to us as a people, as a party. It will be unfair to Nigerians in general that we have this kind of situation going on around our, 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 our government. But then it is an internal thing within the party. We will seek, we will seek ways of resolving the problem. And I assure you, within a couple of days, it will be resolved. OK, Mr. Ajiboye, good to see you. Have I really wish to be seeing you. Uh, no, it's Rufai talking to you, Mr. Ajiboye. Who is that? This is Rufai, your very good friend. Happy New ah, Year to you. Rufai, How are you? Rufai, <laughs> Rufai, Rufai. Okay. Mr. Right, Ajiboye. Okay, good to see you. So, you've said a lot, <clears throat> and it's yes. only good to exonerate your candidates. But he said something the last time. He said that some people don't think, and they have moved the currency from 200 naira to the dollar to 800 naira to the dollar. But your party came out, through Mr. Bayan Onuga, to say that he wasn't referring to President Muhammadu Buhari, that he was referring to the PDP. So let's deal with some numbers. Let's play with numbers this morning, and let's be empirical. Can you empirically state for me? I really wish to be seeing you. Uh, please, uh, I need to be seeing <laughs> the, you. I want no, to see you. Don't worry. You'll hear it's not proper for me to be talking no, to somebody no, I'm not seeing. No, you'll hear my voice. Don't worry. My voice is good enough for you. So please I want you to tell them at the studio to put the monitor so I can be seeing you. Uh, Mr. Ajiboye, just hang on a minute. I want you to empirically analyze for me how the argument made by Mr. Bayo Nonuga holds water. And I'll give you some facts. I'll play around with facts. Between 2007 and 2011, the Naira to the dollar exchange rate was 123, about 228 Naira to the dollar. By 2011, it was 165. That's about 40 Naira difference right. or less than that. Between 2011 to 2015, from 165, the exchange rate rose to 200 naira. In fact, if you remember the campaign slogan then of your party, the APC, they said 200 naira to the dollar, is that okay? We'll change it. But from 2015, and when you look at from 128 to about 200, that's cumulatively around 60 Naira increase in the space of eight years. 60 Naira increase, or less than that. From 2015 to 2023, from 200 to 740, or 800, like your candidate, presidential candidate said, that's been a close to 600 Naira or more increase in the rate of the Naira to the dollar. So please, empirically and factually explain to me, how is it the fault of the PDP as regards the Forex when the increase in the Naira to the dollar from 2017 to 2015 of the APC, uh, for the PDP, was just 60 Naira, but the APC increased it to 600 Naira difference. Happy New Year to you, sir. Yeah. Can I respond now? Yes, sir. Now, very good for very good for academic exercise, the statistics you rolled out. But first of all, um, I will address this in so many, you know, dimensions. One. Uh, in the last, uh, about 40 years back that Buhari was president of uh, military head of states, he actually, you know, um, embarked on Naira redesign, for instance. And uh, perhaps the governor of Central Bank at the time was a lot more professionally articulate. Um, the exchange rate in question is managed by 
an institution, not the villa actually, is managed by an institution. And the institution managing it should take the blame for its unprecedented increase or credit for, its, for the ability to curtail the exchange rate. That the exchange rate is ballooning beyond reasonable doubts is not entirely the fault of the president or the presidency. All, at the same time, if I were the president, for instance, and I see and feel and know that the exchange rate is going beyond reasonable proportion, I probably would ask the CBN governor, is it that you don't know what to do or what exactly is the problem? If he doesn't give me good reason as chief executive, I fire him and take propositions from other people who can manage properly the exchange rate. Now, I personally do not see any reason why Emefile should have continued in office. One, Emefile was a PDP appointee. <laughs> PDP appointee. For whatever reason, Jonathan would not have appointed him if he didn't suit his purpose. So therefore, I can infer rightly that Emefile was, was and is PDP. Well, his attempt to join APC and his branded vehicles could mean that he probably at a time wanted to cross to APC. But the fact remains like that. So now number two, the exchange rate is oscillating. It's going up, down, up, down. I think it's a normal process in economic management. I am not saying that our particular circumstance that it has gone hit the roof is right. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying to you that the exchange rate management, if we need to blame anybody at all, we share the blame between the chief executive of CBN and probably the presidency. But again, the president is only supposed to say, OK, I, you are the professional here. Do your best. If the professional is not doing his best, this is where I actually fault Mr. President. Mr. With Jiboye. due respect, sir, Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Jiboye, with due respect, you've yes. not answered my question. No, you've not answered my question. Let me repeat it. And I took the time and Maybe I gave you... you are not you, listening very well. And I gave you data. Hang on a minute. I understood. Rufai, I, I understood Mr. your question. Mr. Jiboye, let me ask. Let me ask question. again. This was what I asked you. Your, Please do. Your campaign... Yeah said that Bola Ahmed Tinubu was not referring to the president, that he was referring to the PDP yes. when he said about exchange rates. And I gave you data, yes. painstaking data, and I said, please, empirically yes. prove to me how the PDP caused yes. an exchange rate problem when in the last eight years of the PDP, narrow to the dollar, was just a 60 naira difference. But in the last eight years of the APC, yeah. it ballooned into a 600 naira difference. That's the question I'm asking. Mm. That's it. Yes. Just explain how the PDP caused the problem. Because we saw during the PDP's time, in 2007, it was 128. In 2015, when you took power, it was 200. That was mm. like a 60 naira difference. But, in 2015, I've just, I've just told you, Mr. Ajiboye, let me finish. Sabotage. Let me finish, please. Let me finish. Please go ahead. From 2015 to 2023 now, it has increased to 600 naira. Mm. The PDP only increased their yes. dollar to the naira variation with 60 naira. Your party increased it to 600 naira. So explain to me how PDP is the problem. Let's, let's play with data. Give me data if you have to. It is not important to explain to you directly how PDP is the problem or how PDP is not the problem. I have told you exactly what I see the problem, where I see the problem lying. I have told you directly here that uh, uh, MFLA is an appointee of the PDP, first of all. Okay. You can interpolate, you can infer from that how PDP became important in this issue. Secondly, the foreign exchange management has quite a lot of variables. You know, the, if MFLA is managing, if MFLA is capable of managing the exchange rate regime Badjibu properly, you. there would not have been this kind of, you know, uh, problem. Yes. Please, we need to make progress. We can't be repeating this sentence. Yes, sir. 
Okay, now here, some of the things exactly. you said. Exactly. Thank you very much, well, Dr. Abati. Just, just wait. You spent more time uh, attacking Emefiele. I'm sure he has his spokespersons, but there are certain clarifications. Yes, he was appointed in 2014 by the government of uh, President Goodluck Jonathan. It was my pleasure at the time to announce the appointment, yes. having been so directed by the president. But you will recall that in 2019, an APC president reappointed him for another term of five years, which his letter of appointment said will be the final term. So you can't say he's a PDP appointee. President uh, Buari reappointed him, and the uh, Senate confirmed that appointment under Section 81, Subsection 2 of the Constitution as required. That's number one. Number two, when Erufai spoke, Nasi Erufai was very clear. He said the fifth columnists are in the villa and that they, they, they are supporting some people who took part in the primaries. MFLA does not work in the villa. He's a public servant who works at the CBN. And he did not well, take part. part in the primaries. He did not take part in the primaries. That's where exactly I'm going. He didn't take so he part. He attempted to even went to court. No, but he did not take part. Yes, he went to Correct. court. He went to the federal high court Abuja. I agree. I agree with you. To seek clarification as to whether INEC or the office of the Atidera could buy him. The federal high court did not grant his prayers, and that was the end of so that. So he showed Just wait. Then three. He made it clear at the time that like, if he wanted to participate, if he got the leave of court, he would buy forms. That's your expensive uh, 100 million form, which is own money, not forms that will be bought for him uh, by other people. And four, even the president is backing the CBN governor in terms of what he has done with Naira Redesign. And the CBN has the independence and has the powers under specific sections of the CBNR, 2B, 17, 18, 19, accordingly. So the CBN governor has not acted outside the purview of the law. My question and my expectation was that you will help us to identify those fifth columnists inside Asovila as, as raised by Nasir Rufa. If you would still like to address that question. And finally, Yesterday, uh, the APC PCC launched what they call the Thinking Caps app. And uh, we're told that this Thinking Cap app application is targeted at use. Is there any plan to ex uh, extend the uh, you know, bridging of knowledge gap also to senior persons within the APC? Because Thinking Cap, putting on Thinking Cap looks like a good idea. But it shouldn't just be the youths, it should be party wide. Tell us more about the thinking cap too. Uh, Dr. Ruben, doc, doc, Dr. Ruben, I did say, and I said very clearly, mm. that during the primaries, we had, we had you know, some kind of voice from the villa that, was, that, was, that might have been different from what the president would have wished for. So I am very much aware that there are some voices within the system that are probably not working favorably for some you know, situations. But to tell me, to tell you who the, who the voices are will be a bit difficult. Just as uh, uh, Governor Nasir Al-Rufai could, could not name names, I would not be in a position to tell you who they are. But obviously, from what we can hear, see, and perceive, that, I mean, the wife of the president had come out at some time to say that, look, there are people within this, within, within, around the president, working against some, you know, some situations, even as it affects the party. So that's a fact that has been established. I, I, I do not, I do not have any, I do not have any information with respect to who these individuals are. But whatever it is, I do know that the, these kind of actions are not going to be. Uh, beneficial for the kind of legacy the president is willing to, 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 to leave. So therefore, we will continue, like I said, if, 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 if it is within and around the president, we will do all it we can to ensure that we resolve the matter internally as best as we can. That's, that's just the best I can say with respect to that. The, this is because at the end of the day, the fact that we have been able to locate where the problem is would mean that we begin, to, we begin and continue to seek how to solve the problem. Yes, I agree totally. There are fifth columnists within the system. If not, some things will not happen the way they are happening. That's a fact. 
Now, talking about the application launched by my directorate, you know, yesterday, uh, the application is targeted at the most, at the most active segment of the population, but does not exonerate the older people, you know, within the system or even outside the system. So uh, that the application is targeted at the youth is to tell you that we are, we are, we are interested in, uh, in uh, the young population of, of, of this country because they are the future of Nigeria. And our party, our party and our campaign is absolutely interested in seeing a future that can be built around the young people so that you know, we can have them taken care of in a way that will 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 develop our future as a as a people, our future as a nation. So that is the thinking behind that application and the launching of it. Well, thank you very much, Otumba uh, Biodun Ajiboye, Assistant Director, Media and Publicity of the Tinubu uh, Shetima Presidential Campaign Council.